It's good to see you as always. Nice to see you. Um, a lot going on in the Fox universe. A couple cool films. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about The Hate You Give because mm-hmm. this is a, it's a special one. It seems like a special one. Yep. Um, talk to me about just sort of the source material, how if you were uh, aware of it prior to this and what, mm-hmm. what's the reason to do this in a, in a nutshell for you. So I actually attached to The Hate You Give when I read the unpublished manuscript. It had yet to be published as a book and when it was published it became a wild success immediately. But when I read the character of Star Carter I felt like I had never seen myself so so accurately represented in such a nuanced way in any book or any piece of anything. It was so special to see this character who is growing up in this lower income black community but going to this white private school which was actually my direct life experience. Um, having to figure out how to navigate these different worlds, code switch and not necessarily belong in either world but but still try to navigate it in order to survive. Yeah. Not to mention just how powerful it is then to see the story itself play out and and make one of these stories that we've become so desensitized to because we see it pop up every day right. on the TV. Um, see it put into a personal context and live through this story with this girl who's having to, to I guess for those who might not know, um, go to, to trial and testify um, for her friend who was killed by police. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a, a very relevant story clearly for these mm-hmm. times we're living in. I mean, and I think a lot of people, a lot of young people are finding themselves um, energized, politicized by events they're seeing, events they're experiencing firsthand or events they're seeing on the news. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, it seems like you've been, you know, since you had cognition, you've had, you've been an active <laughs> person, like, you know, mm-hmm. a, a socially aware person. But mm-hmm. was there a turning point for you, uh, an experience, something you saw, something you experienced that, that made you realize I need to be a participant in these events around me? I think when the Black Lives Matter movement um, had such a, a initial surgence, I think that's when I really found myself feeling energized and politicized and wanting to use my platform as much as possible mm-hmm. to change things. I think since then I've, I've gone through different phases of disillusionment and fear, especially under the regime that we're currently living under. Uh, I think I've had moments of, of insecurity and doubt and and I've had to refocus how I, I utilize my platform. And so I feel like movies like The Hate You Give is, yeah. is the way in which I can be the most effective as opposed to just utilizing the internet. You know? yeah. It's striking in, in the footage they showed today here at CinemaCon, um, just seeing you know, this character being taught sort of how to behave around police, right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, do you, I'm just curious, like in your own personal life, were the, do you remember those kind of conversations, were there conversations like that growing up about how to conduct yourself in those yeah. kind of situations? I can't necessarily remember one specific conversation or moment from when I was a kid, but growing up it was just a given, you know, especially in my neighborhood, is lock your doors. My parents wouldn't let me, I was a latchkey kid, so my parents wouldn't really let me bike around my neighborhood. But it was a knowing that if you saw police, you had to straighten up and act a particular way and don't do anything out of line. And that could even possibly be conceived as out of line because they'll get you for it. That's just something that like was just obvious news to me yeah. as a kid. Um, and it was wild, I was talking to some people who saw the footage earlier today, and that's something that they, as white people, had never even conceived of, that you would have to have that type of conversation. Right. So I think that's why the movie is so important. Um, you guys went through an interesting process of the production of this, I just want to mention. I mean, there's a casting switch. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, there must have been <laughs> caught you off guard, to say the least. Mm-hmm. I mean, can, 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 can you give me a, some perspective on sort of, I don't know, what, what went through your mind when that happened, when you were your co-star in it, uh, found some really inappropriate stuff from past YouTube videos mm-hmm. of his, uh, landed KJ Apa as your, as your mm-hmm. uh, new co-star. But just give me a sense of sort of what it was like to go through that very unusual kind of circumstance. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was stressful. Honestly, when I fa- when I first found out, I laughed just because it was so absurd, right? That we're making this film right. about Black Lives Matter, and and one of our cast members is making racist commentary. Like it was, I I I just I'm an absurdist in life, so that's, you don't laugh at it. So, know, I, so if you don't laugh, you're crying, you know. Right. Um, but it was it was a very obvious, a very obvious decision had to be made. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really much of a decision. It's like, if we're going to come forth with a, a film about Black Lives Matter, we need to make sure that 
there is integrity from top to bottom. Yeah. Uh, there's integrity with every single person who was involved and that the project really rests in their heart and they want to speak to the events as authentically as possible. What was it like to go back and shoot with KJ? Are you a are, are you a new Riverdale fan? <laughs> Have you been a Riverdale I'm, fan? I'm definitely a new Riverdale fan okay. now. I'm the biggest KJ Abba fan <laughs> now. Huge. Um, yeah, KJ's awesome. Really, really fantastic kid. And we had a, a really fun time. Nice. I would think I was definitely fueled by my frustration with having to redo work. Sure. Um, I think I actually fueled, fueled my work in a really great way where I was able to, to channel it into giving the most angry performance <laughs> that I could. Yeah, um, Yeah. just because I think it's funny. I was able to draw upon actual, the actual transgressions of, of racist white men <laughs> and how they were directly affecting me. In, yeah. <laughs> in, in Channeling for some good art. That yeah, that's some good change. That's good. Exactly. Okay. Um, it's so funny. I've actually gotten a chance to see The Darkest Minds and to see, awesome. like, some. there's some commonality in these films of Bizarrely. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, they're obviously different genres, mm -hmm. much different kinds of films. I definitely I put my fist up in both of them. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> this is your new thing. This my is your thing. signature move. I will, it's, a, it's a writer in my contract <laughs> right. now. I'm not, I won't do the film yeah. unless I'm raising my fist. Exactly. At least what's new. Do Star Wars, but you got to find something somewhere. In there. <laughs> but is that is that coincidence? It sounds like it's not. I mean, you're you're gravitating towards certain types of material that are about you know young people finding their voice and using it for good. I mm -hmm. mean, it seems like it's something that clearly is resonating with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What do you? I mean, what what is the criteria in terms of what you're looking for? Looking for a good nuanced material that I feel like represents um, me and and has strong female protagonists. And I feel like it's really special that I'm able to do these roles because even Ruby in The Darkest Mind traditionally would have been cast white. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I got to do that was actually pretty mind boggling to me. I think what I'm looking for is is anything that I, I, I think can be a tool. Um, and so I feel like the hate you give is a tool in terms of telling a story, making it accessible to people that it might not be accessible to normally. And even uh, Darkest Minds will reach a large audience of people and they'll be able to see this strong character uh, played by a black girl. I think yeah. that's really special. You, you spoke uh, you spoke very frankly recently about taking yourself out of the running in Black Panther when that casting <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, conversation was going on. I'm just curious, like, is there perspective on it now? You, I, I assume you've seen the film by now, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously, touched a lot of people and there's a great film not just in terms of mm -hmm. quality and also in terms of what it means I think for representation um, do you have any kind of like additional kind of perspective on that decision having seen the product and seen the reception <laughs> to it um, no I don't my, my perspective remains the same I think there is kind of a misconception uh, mis I think my, my comments are a bit misconstrued so people think that I was offered a role right. in Black Panther and I was like, no, I'm, I'm too good for that, <laughs> or something which is absolutely absurd. Um, I just decided not to continue in the audition process just because I thought it was a space that I shouldn't occupy and I still stand by that. I yeah, a last thing for you, I want to just mention that the, the, the cast is pretty eclectic in this in this film. Mm -hmm. and some really inspiring mm -hmm. performers as actors and in the way they carry their lives. Um, and that must inspire you both as an actor, but also, um, yeah, just being around them. I'm just mm -hmm. curious, like, who inspires you, whether it's someone that you worked with in this cast or, or someone today that is a, uh, a beacon of light in a sometimes dark world right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, everyone inspired me on set. Everyone was so special, from Lamar, who played my brother, to Regina, who was constantly cracking jokes on set and, and giving us light in that form. Russell Hornsby played my father and just gave me so many tidbits of wisdom and advice throughout the process. Mm -hmm. And so I felt very grateful to be guided by him the entire time. Something that he told me that I, I carry with me a lot is, he said, keep your fist, but put it in your pocket. Nice, unless you have to raise it for a movie. <laughs> or unless you have to raise it, then I'll take it you take it out of the pocket. Yeah. Temporarily, then it goes back in the pocket. <laughs> put it back in the exactly. pocket. <laughs> good tip. Uh, it's always good to see you. Congratulations. Nice to see you, thank I can't you. Wait to check it out.